So when it comes to strike, uh, what you should really be able to do is pick up any stock and find out all the information that you need to about it. I'm going to try and try and do that with BHEL. So what we do is simply click type BHEL on top in the search box. You can start with anywhere. You can start on the overview and you have all the links to all the information that we've put together and we'll of course be adding more tools over time. But this is what we have right now. So let's go over what we can find out, right? The simplest thing is you have a front screen and uh, you get a quick overview of what it's done, especially seasonally. How is the stock really behave? For example, minus 5% in the month of February. February has just begun. Does that really tell you anything? Is there a pattern here? Let's look at the average for the line graph. So we can actually see this is the worst month of the year. And this is very in much in line with what the Nifty also has. So if you go to the Nifty 50, open the same chart, you'll find that Feb does tend to be the worst month of the year and BHL being a large cap maybe follows that. But at minus 5%, it's uh, a bigger negative, negative number than I probably think would be on the Nifty itself. So that is the first thing that you can actually get to know. Seasonal pattern. And you can see year-wise detailing of the seasonality as well. So uh, you get a quick check. Now, some people might want to know other information than you know just the fundamentals and technicals what's been happening you can quickly just click on the bulletin board for the stock go down to the announcements the corporate actions which means that you can have the entire dividend history in front of you all the way back to 2003 so that's a lot of information to know few places that you can actually see that all at once or what are all the splits that happen a 10 is to 2 split right so a 10 is to 2 split means the new face value is not 2 rupees Okay, and that's something you could even have seen on the overview page because right here on the right hand side, you have the face value, market cap, TTM, book value, price to book and basic, uh, you know, data about the stocks. So that's something that we quickly just found out by looking over there. Uh, but you can also know what are the bonuses. There were two bonuses, 2007, 17 rights, mergers uh, and how about, how about deals, you know, so who are the people really buying and selling every day? A lot of transactions happening by you know, a couple of companies repeatedly, Riti Private Limited and, you know, this tower research was doing a lot of trading earlier. Now it's this jump trader trading financial, which is doing a lot of trading in large blocks in the company buying and selling every day. So that's, that's something that you can know who's really very, very active. And then who's doing the block trades, right? It's especially the ETFs, mutual funds who are actually buying and selling, uh, and how much and which dates. And then who are the insiders in this case? We know the government's the biggest insider in 2019. They sold some of their holdings in a buyback. Okay. So this is all instant information about any company that you can find out simply going to the bulletin board. And that's what we are checking out on BHEL. I'll try and look at something else. Uh, we'll try and look at the fundamentals. Okay. Moment I click there, you see a recommended ratio. We will be doing a webinar in the upcoming, uh, on the upcoming Saturday on uh, which ratio is relevant to which company and why. And, uh, you know, how to uh, use this. But right now, what I'm trying to do is a quick take. So moment I move here, I see, well, the P ratio has gone to more than a thousand. Isn't that insane? Uh, and why did that happen? So let's just go back to summary. The first thing you should look at is results. Okay. So what's happening here? It shows a drop and then it shows a slight increase. Okay. Fine. Revenues are starting to pick up again after the drop post COVID. Is that a good thing? It's good if profits are growing. So what you'd really want to know is what's happening to the pack. Oops, pad dropped a lot. It's back in green. Nice, but it's not really taking off 22, 23 flattish. You can get even more detailed data on this. Historically, we can chart it so we can actually choose what we want to chart. I want to chart it, you know, pad with say a bit. We can do that. Uh, and if we do that, then we actually see, oh, well, this is where we were on the pad and boom, it's fallen. It's just down here. And for the TTM basis, Absolutely nothing actually. So for some reason, this is not doing well, but the stock is doing fantastic. So the stock's doing fantastic, even though we really haven't seen any much change in numbers. That's the thing that we just came to know. And uh, so the next thing you'd want to know, okay, if this is the valuation. Maybe P is not the right thing to look at. There's an EV by EBITDA mentioned here. Let's see what does EV by EBITDA really, uh, really tell us. So we click on that and we get a differential chart. Okay. So now you have a chart, but you see a gap over here and the gap is because the company went into a loss. So when it's in a loss, we actually can't have an EBITDA number. And so you can't plot the ratio else it will go off the charts. So in this case, uh, these two ratios are actually not helping us much. We might either have to go to a price to book or a market cap to sales. Uh, so let's try those. Now this looks a little more reasonable on a 10 year basis. You do see 
This was the peak point. We've put a red line here, which is two standard deviations and a bottom line here, which is two minus standard deviations. So yeah, you have this range, which sort of tells you where you are. And now you have gone way above this red line here from around two times on price to book to almost uh, three times. And so that's showing up right on the top outside the two standard deviation line. Okay. We can try some other metrics as well. Okay. So for example, we can look at market cap to sales. Mm, that's also gone beyond two standard deviations. So this is what it is. This is what you come to know. You can look at the earnings yield, which can also be all over the place. Yeah. This hasn't really gone up that much. It has stopped here and stayed there. Okay. So the earnings yield is really a measure of uh, what the earnings does relative to, you know, the uh, price, you know, how much are you really earning in terms of uh, based on the market price, though that is sort of what we also try to do in an EV by EBITDA calculation. So this may almost be just an upside down of the EV by EBITDA because uh, uh, when we do that, we are really saying, okay, this is what you're earning for all these stakeholders. And then when we are saying earnings yield, probably the only difference is we may be only looking at earnings, uh, you know, not the interest uh, to payments to the uh, rest of the stakeholders, which means only equity. So that could be the only difference between these two uh, methodologies.